This video will show you how to simulate the precipitation of aluminum-3 scandium comparing spherical with cuboid morphology using the precipitation module known as TC Prisma. This calculation is based on precipitation module example 9, which can be accessed from within ThermoCalc in the Help menu, Open Examples, Precipitation Module TC Prisma. To begin, click on the precipitation simulation template to get all the nodes we need for a precipitation calculation. Set the database package to demo aluminum-based alloys. This will load both the thermodynamic and kinetic aluminum demo databases. Select the elements aluminum and scandium. Set scandium to 0.18 mole percent, which automatically sets aluminum to 99.82 mole percent. Our system is now defined, so click on the precipitation calculator node. We will have two precipitation calculators in this example, so we will rename this node to avoid confusion. Right-click on the node and select Rename. For this calculation, we assume spherical morphology and neglect elastic strain energy, so name the node Sphere, then hit Enter. Set the matrix phase to FCCA1 and set the precipitate phase to AL3SC. Under Calculation Type, select Isothermal. Set the temperature to 350 degrees Celsius and the simulation time to 1 e to the 9 seconds. Next, right-click on the Plot Renderer node and select Rename. Name the node Mean Radius and hit Enter. Under the y-axis, change the units to nanometers and the axis type to logarithmic 10. Our calculation is now set, but I want to link another precipitation calculator to this plot. Right-click on the Sphere node and select Clone. Right-click on the New Calculator node and select Rename. Name the node Cuboid and hit Enter. A major new feature in the 2017B version of the Precipitation module allows users to set the morphology of the non-spherical particles to cuboid, plate, or needle. The evolution of the shape when the particles grows is determined by competition between interfacial energy and elastic strain energy. We will briefly discuss the theory behind this in this video, but you can learn more about it in the online help system by going to Help, Online Help. Search for Morphology, then select Precipitation Morphology. We just set up a sphere calculation, so we will now set up a cuboid calculation and compare the results. Under the matrix phase, select the Show Details button and set elastic properties to cubic. The program automatically suggests a good set of default values, so we can leave those as they are. Next, click the Show Details button under the precipitate phase. Set the morphology to cuboid. Change the transformation strain to Calculate from Molar Volume. The second calculation is now set up, so we will link it to the Plot Renderer node. Right-click on the Mean Radius Plot Renderer node, highlight Add Predecessor, and select Cuboid. Notice that there are now two tabs for this plot, one for Sphere and one for Cuboid. We already configured the Sphere settings, so we just need to set up the Cuboid tab. Click on the Cuboid tab and change the Y-axis unit to nanometers, and the axis type to logarithmic 10. Our calculation is now ready, so right-click on the Mean Radius node and select Perform Now. Once the calculation is complete, your plot will appear in the results pane. The blue line represents the sphere calculation, and the red line represents the cuboid calculation. And you can see that, in this instance, they are almost identical. By radius for non-spherical particles, we mean the radius of equivalent spheres with the same volume. If you run the example file that was included in your software, the plot also contains an experimental file, which you can see closely matches the calculations. Let's set up another plot to look at additional results. Right-click on the cuboid node, highlight Create New Successor, and select Plot Renderer. Right-click on the New Plot Renderer node, and select Rename. Name the node Mean Radius and Cuboid Factor and hit Enter. In this plot, we will have two y axes, so click on the green plus sign under the y axis. 
Leave the first axis variable as mean radius, but change the units to nanometers, and set the axis type to logarithmic 10. Set the second axis variable to mean cubic factor. Uncheck the box next to automatic scaling and set the limits from 1 to 1.41, stepping at 0.1. The plot is now set, so right-click on the mean radius and cuboid factor plot node and select Perform Now. The blue line represents the evolution of the average radius of the cubic particles as a function of time. Again, for non-spherical precipitates, this means the radius of equivalent spheres with the same volume. The red line shows the average cubic factor as a function of time. A value of 1 represents a spherical shape, and a square root of 2 represents a cubic shape. As I mentioned earlier, the evolution of the shape when the particles grows is determined by competition between interfacial energy and elastic strain energy. In general, the shape is close to spherical at small particle sizes because the interfacial energy term dominates. At large sizes, the elastic energy dominates and it is therefore more favorable with a non-spherical shape. We can see that the particles get a more cubic form at later times when they grow to larger sizes. Let's set up one final plot that shows the particle size and cubic factor distribution at the end of the simulation. This plot will also have two y-axes, so let's clone the previous plot. Right-click on the mean radius and cuboid factor node and select Clone. Right-click on the new plot renderer node and select Rename. Name the node PSD and cuboid factor and hit Enter. Under the y-axis, set the first axis variable to Size Distribution. Change the axis type to Linear. Set the second y-axis to cuboid factor distribution and set the time to 1 e to the 9. Check the box next to automatic scaling. Under the x-axis, change the units to nanometers. Our plot is now set, so select Perform at the bottom center of the program. The blue curve, which shows the particle size distribution, is close to the regular LSW size distribution that we would have expected for spherical particles. The cubic factor distribution shows that the smallest particles are closer to spherical and that the larger ones get more and more cubic. We hope you found this video useful. You can learn more about the precipitation module and other calculation types by watching additional videos on our website at thermocalc.com in the video tutorials section.